I'm Judge Reinhold. I'm Diaper Chris. I'm Major Tom. I'm no internet name Anthony. And we're back with episode zero of Men Quaffing Elixirs. This is episode one. Last episode was episode zero. Okay. So that, we're, I'll fix it in post. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. So uh, for those who didn't watch the last video, we made some characters. Uh, we're going to go on an adventure here. We're going to be playing the Fate Accelerated. This is the name of the game. Uh, but we're playing Dungeons and the Dragons. Who are you kidding? Come on. The, the game that Gygax invented. Um, Who? Gary Gygax, the inventor of Dungeons and Dragons. You made that name up on the spot. That's one of the monsters we're going to fight, it is, isn't it? It is. You actually know the guy that made Dungeons and Dragons? You're a oh, nerd. Yeah, oh yeah, he's a legend, man. <laughs> I thought it was created by Ben Dungeon. <laughs> His wife, Emily Dragon. The way that this game plays, Fate Accelerated, especially Fate Accelerated, is it's... It, we're not going to be doing like a ton of like dice rolling. We're mostly going to be having conversations. And Good. Then we're going to be coming up with a story together. Um, so if any time I, you know, say something that you guys aren't cool with, Stop me. Let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll if you offend us, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll work it out together, and um, you know we'll, we'll we'll proceed with the scene from there. We're, we're all gonna have fun trying to tell an interesting story. When there's conflict, dice will come into play. Um, we're always gonna be rolling four dice when we roll dice. Um, I actually probably won't be using these dice in the future because this system uses what's called fudge dice. That's right, kids, fudge dice. And uh, what fudge dice are? They're six-sided dice. So regular dice. They're regular dice, except the, the markings are different. These these dice aren't fudge dice. These are D6s, Chris. This is a little education for you uh, in the Dungeons & Dragons type. Would these dice work in Vegas? Uh, no. Well, I mean... They have an anti-fudge policy. They have a they, the they use square table. dice, squared corner dice in Vegas, so probably not. So fudge dice, they have two dashes on them, two zeros and two pluses. You can kind of think of the dashes as like negative or th a, th a bad thing. Uh, zeros as neutral or nothing, and the pluses as a positive thing. So the way that we'll be using fudge dice in this is um, ones and twos will be negative, fours and threes and fours will be neutral, and uh, fives and sixes will be good. And next week I'll have some actual fudge dice. I just didn't really want to go to the gaming store today. Because it's football, it's Sunday, and I gotta watch football. So you can't so. eat it, diaper. <laughs> you can't eat the fudge dice. Uh, so, um, whenever we roll dice, what we're gonna do is we, we went through and we gave you guys attributes uh, last game, uh, approaches. We'll, whenever you're rolling dice, we're gonna roll the dice, and then we're gonna add the number of whatever the proper approach would be. So, like, let's say, diaper Chris, you're sneaking, you roll four dice, well, let's see what you get. I like those odds. You like those odds. So, so Diaper Chris, you got a negative one here because you got uh, two neutral, or three neutrals and a, a negative. So, but you would add your sneak, which is one. So you would end up getting a neutral score. So, which would mean probably something bad would happen, or some not some nothing would happen possibly. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with situation. you. I'm I'm not gonna pay attention to any of that, and you're gonna tell me everything that I need to know. That's fine. You'll you'll get the when hang you roll of it. for me. Right. Um, that's great. So you, you'll just tell me how you want to approach a situation, um, and I will roll dice and uh, add appropriate modifiers, and then tell you how the how things came out. So perfect. Do you, do you guys have any questions? I don't understand anything, so no. Okay, good. Um, basically, I'm going to tell you a story. You're going to say what you want your character to do whenever I throw it to you guys. Perfect. That's essentially how role playing games work. Okay. So, um, with that being said, let's let's get started, I guess. All right, let's do let's it. Let's do it. Tell your story. How you guys know each other is you guys are uh, three leaders of what you fancy uh, sort of a noble, illustrious mercenary company, right? So, in reality, though, you guys are just basically glorified exterminators. Uh, when a fantasy nuisance comes up, like, you know, goblins or giant spiders, you guys are sent to investigate and deal with a problem. Um, this is actually a decent little job in your community. Um, judge, your doting great uncle is a minor baron. And when you were uh, forced out of uh, your the home where you grew up in, 
he kind of uh, took you under his wing and uh, hooked you up with this royal contract in this new new city, which is called Anyton. So you guys are uh, guild. You're a member of a mercenary guild in Anyton. You said we're a mercenary guild. Um, I'm not hip to fantasy, so is that like paid consultants? Kind of, yeah. You like you're you're um you get hired by the the throne to go like. Oh, there's a bunch of bandits. We, you know, we don't want these bandits here. Go throw these bandits contractors. out. Right, right. So we don't want to spend, send the army to go do this. We're gonna so we send... don't do anything because we're contractors. You, you kind of not. Yeah. Um. You, you do. Um. Well, well, we'll get into more of that later. But you guys work fairly regularly. But the jobs that you do are mostly just getting rid of like nuisances. Um. It's not super hard work. Again, the work doesn't make you rich. It's not terribly risky. Us oh, so were like temps. Yeah, it provides a, a decent living for you, and you have a couple. Okay, of, so then we're not like temps. <laughs> you have a, Are uh, we paid uh, hourly or salary? You you play, you get paid like a, a salaried wage by the crown. You're essentially like, uh, hmm, I'm trying to think. You're like you're paid like a stipend, at like every week or two weeks or however often you gotta want to get paid. We're like janitorial bounty hunters. <laughs> Pretty much, you can think of it yourselves that way. Uh, and you do have a few ragtag employees, um, and we can we can talk about those guys later. Can they be skeletons? No, they're they're going to be like humans or elves or gnomes or halflings. You know, maybe, maybe Judge is a wizard, so maybe sometime he can dabble dabble in. But we'll, we'll... if you're good, diaper. <laughs> okay, yeah. conjure us up some skeletons. Yeah. Uh, so okay, you, so where we're going to start here is you guys have uh, you just finished a job. In the sort of the noble district of the of the city, uh, a group of giant hornets made a hive in the guest bedroom of a semi-important duke, and with some difficulty, you managed to rid the area of these giant hornets. And you're definitely looking a little worse for wear. Uh, Chris, your face is, or excuse me, Michael. I don't want to. This is your character's name, mm, Michael. Yes. Your, your face is covered with uh, blotchy red hives, um, where a, a hornet stinger repeatedly found its mark. Tom. Uh, or uh, Thad, excuse me. You are um, you're walking a bit hunched over. You're holding your back. You fell off a ladder. It was it was pretty nasty. <laughs> Yeesh, and, uh, Tim Taylor. You judge, you're you're doing okay. You got a bit of dirt and grime, but for the most part, you're like you're kind of the leader. You're telling people what to do. So you're you're okay. You got a bit, bit of dirt and grime, but you know not too terrible. Uh, and along with you is your trusty, uh, if a bit bumbling, employee named Lil Jack who was somehow managed to find himself outside getting some ex- insecticides when the worst of the, the Hornet job came to task. So that's where you are right now. You're, you're kind of walking back home from a, from a job well done. And as you're walking, you sort of notice two noblemen uh, beginning to chuckle in your direction. All right, well, do, do we start? So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. The the nobleman is kind of like, he sees you passing, and he goes, "Mmm, look, Beauregard, it's those." Oh wait, before we before we start it, do you want to name your mercenary company? The, the nobleman said all this. No, 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 no. I'm I'm saying I'm oh, I'm, I'm saying I before I'm we joking. start, let's let's name your mercenary because I have a bunch of like, I wrote stuff and then I wrote a blank line in because I don't know what you guys wanted to call your mercenary company. I thought you I let you name it, give you. Some sense of, sense of ownership over this adventure. Uh, a judge and two guys. <laughs> I, I wait, wait, it. hey, 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 hey! I like Michael and two guys. No, no, mm-mm. Anthony said I was the leader. J- judge is technically the leader uh, because I appointed him the leader because I thought he would probably like do more stuff than you. Nope. It, it, <laughs> That's what it, you get for taking a risk. It, it didn't turn out right i was actually wrong board? but i just i just assume i when i wrote everything i just assumed judge would like actually do things that i asked him to well you know to what happens when we assume this. dungeon master yeah i followed your letter of the law certainly not the spirit <laughs> so that still makes me the leader okay i like it um did tom Wait. got any, any input on this here i just ask that we add a pizza place to the end of it okay. so pizza hasn't been invented yet <laughs> commit to the theme jerk <laughs> So, uh, what do you want to do? Judge and co? Um, Judge and co? No, no, no. I don't want to. I don't have that big of an ego. <laughs> let's, let's see here. Um, what's, what's something that we kind of play off the dog, the bounty hunter? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. good. That's good. What about, uh, 
Mm. Or, or like the Pawn Stars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because we're like, uh, we're kind of like the Pawn Stars, but not at all. You guys are a lot like the Pawn Stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two perfectly <laughs> timely references, Dog the Bounty Hunter and Pound... Uh, <laughs> Pawn Stars. <laughs> Sounds making us eat our fantasy. What about the dog with Pawn Stars? <laughs> Couldn't pick any two hotter shows right now. <laughs> How about the Osbournes? Can we work that in somehow? <laughs> I like the Osbournes. <laughs> Me too. No, we're not being the Osbournes. Hmm? <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll put down, let's put down some possible options. Okay, yeah, Anthony let's talk about roll for it. Yeah, That's yeah. how we settle this in your world, right, Anthony? Yeah, it's true. You, you got to no. roll for it. Hold on. No, these names suck. We got to do something <laughs> better. How do you know? Um, the Osborne. It's not going to be the Osborne. You could be like, uh, you could be Little Jack, Sharon. <laughs> well, we're noble. Why don't we be like the the rich dudes and we're noble mercenaries? Like, uh, like the millionaire matchmaker. You know, like the millionaire matchmakers, like the millionaire mercenaries. That, you know? Uh, yeah. More alliteration. I'm all for it. Let's go with that. Yeah. Millionaire mercs? I like Nope, it. millionaire mercenaries. Judge is ready to go. He's fired up. All right, uh, let me continue. I mean, Juji, uh, I'm sorry. Juji. Thank you. Wait, no, it's it judge. judge. It is Judge. <laughs> Okay, so let me let me continue before I rudely interrupted myself. All right, so as you remember, you're, you're being laughed at by two two nobles. Doesn't that guy know we're the millionaire mercenaries? In name only, he chuckles. Yeah, we just go hit his books out of his hands. Do a roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> let me finish my prompt, and then you can go knock his books okay. out of his hand. His scrolls or whatever he's got. Mm, it's parchment. Look, Beauregard, it's those millionaire mercenary lads. Say, boys, save the world from any dragon flies today. <laughs> Ugh, this guy gets my goat. Uh, the, the other guy cuts in. I don't know about dragonflies, Rudiger, but from the way it smells, they may have saved us from a heaping pile of horse dung. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't say mm -hmm to that diaper. They're insulting us. <laughs> uh, Michael Battleax. Uh, Michael Battleax, sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to do a stupid voice, though, because my character is too cool for that. Uh, yeah, the, it's always up to the DM to do the stupid voices. I get to do 100% of the stupid voices. Oh, so we roll for that? <laughs> <laughs> now you want to do it. <laughs> so, these guys are laughing at you. What do you want to do? you going to walk away? you going to say something? you going to knock their books out of their hands? Judge as the leader, you get the initiative. No, actually... actually we're gonna give it. We always give initiative to has whoever has the best quick stat. So Thad right now has the best quick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, followed by Mike. Followed by Judge. So whenever we act, we're we're usually gonna act in that order. So it'll, it'll, it'll be Thad first, then Michael Battleaxe, and then Judge. So uh, for the most part, th that might change sometimes. But, uh, okay. So, what do you what do you think, Thad? Are you gonna do anything? You're just gonna let it let it slide? Oh no, I'm gonna respond. Okay. Say what are you, what are you gonna say? What are you, what are you gonna do? In due time, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say back. Listen, both those dragonflies and that giant pile of dung could have spread disease. So for your information, we did save a lot of lives today. You guys think you're so great? You tell them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They sort of shake their heads and and uh, and uh, Michael, would you like to do something? Would you like to respond? Would you like to add on to Thad's comments? Yes, I like to say. Yeah, dweebs. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a wedgie, cause I'm oh. Michael Battleaxe. Okay. All right. Do, do you actually do you say that, or yes. do you go up to no, them? I, I want to give them a wedgie. Okay, so no. you 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 go up to them and try and give them a wedgie. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. That, wow. So there's two of them. There's there's one in red and there's one in blue. Which one would you like to give a wedgie to? Uh, the red one, because Michael okay. Battleaxe is like a bull. That's Rudiger. You're saying going up to Rudiger, you say, "Ah, Rudiger, I'm gonna give you a wedgie." Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, you're gonna go up to him. We're gonna. I'm gonna roll some dice for you. What we're gonna do is you. Uh, you gave me an action right there. We'll go a little behind the scenes. So your action is going up to them and uh, giving them a wedgie. I'm guessing that's probably a pretty forceful action. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna roll with your plus three modifier in mind here. So we're gonna roll some dice. Okay, so that's, that's pretty decent. Well, actually, it's really nothing. 
So the threes are, are nothing, and then the five and the one essentially cancel each other out. So it's zero, but you add that three to it, so you got a success yes. with, with the roll of a three, essentially. Uh, now, Rudiger, he obviously doesn't want to get a wedgie, so he's going to uh, try and avoid getting a wedgie. Um, he's just going to basically roll straight dice. Um, and he has one success. So no, he's, you're, you're going to you walk right up to him, get right in his face. I guess spin him around? You guess you'd have to spin no, him around? No, I, I, I bend him over my leg. Oh, okay, yeah. And geez. then I, and I, just... I give him a wedgie. Yeah. Like real it, high. It's Like it's, over his head. It's uh, Well, well, well. <laughs> I believe that's an atomic wedgie. <laughs> you didn't succeed with enough successes to give an atomic wedgie. Had you gotten like one more margin of success, I would have given you atomic wedgie privileges. But uh, as you only succeeded by two... We're gonna say you just give him like a pretty good wedgie, like a standard but effective wedgie. How do you like that, nerd? That's what I say to him. <laughs> okay. Well, this is is going on, Judge. Would you like to do anything? Or you just, you're just I'd like stand to back get, and watch, or no? I'm gonna get in between uh, Michael Battleax and Rudiger and try to separate them because I don't need my guys ending up in medieval prison. Okay. Well, you try and separate them, but as you do, two of it looks like uh, maybe bodyguards? Two bodyguards from for these two fellows come around the corner, and they're none too pleased at what oh you've done. Oh, boy, now you've done it, Michael. <laughs> what you've done, Michael. <laughs> so uh, you see them sort of crack their knuckles, crack their neck, and they're, uh, they start to rush towards you. Hold on, hold on. Before they rush, can we... You said if we don't like something, we can just tell you. Can we have, like, a stare down in first? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, you want to have a stare down? With these guys? Down? Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Just like a stare down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, you guys are staring at giving each other. You want? Yeah. Go, okay. Uh, Thad, are you interested in, in joining the stare down, or uh, are you gonna yeah, open your eyes? I'm gonna get in on this. <laughs> okay. This <laughs> give are... me, give me a piece of this stare down. Okay. Okay. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, Mike, you're gonna make a roll for a stare down. Thad, you're assisting in his roll for a stare down, which gives Michael Battleaxe a plus one for his roll. I like those odds. <laughs> Great catchphrase. Um, now, I don't really like, I'm trying to think, look at it. Look, we, we got careful, clever, flashy, forceful, quick, or sneaky. I, I, stare down. What, what, do you, what do you go with that? Do you go forceful, maybe? Because it's like, oh, I'm, I'm mad. Or is it like a... The sheer force of his stare, yeah. Yeah. Piercing. Seems like there doesn't. there's not really a good stat for this. So uh, I'm just going to give you a plus one modifier. We're going to roll some dice. Okay, uh, so it looks like you got a one here, which is nothing, or which is a negative, a six, which is uh, a, a positive. So those two cancel out, and three, uh, two threes, which are both don't matter. So you got nothing. So with the plus one from Thad's assistance, you got a, a one. Let's see if let's see if these guys are intimidated. I'm gonna roll on clever for them. Uh, <laughs> we got a roll for the stare down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't have to. I could have like, just let it happen. It's fun to roll dice. Uh, I'm gonna see if they're intimidated. Some people. Or not. Uh, so no, they're they're not really intimidated. They're not they're not like laughing at you, but uh, they these guys mean business. They're not going to be intimidated intimidated by any stares. So they uh, they they rush towards you and they're preparing to make with the fisticuffs. What do you guys want to do? Um, they're they're still like a little ways away. They're they're not quite in, at the scene yet. Uh, you have time to brace yourselves or like uh, you know meet them head on or. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna whip out my wand and I'm gonna grab Rudiger by the collar and point my wand at his temple. Oh! <laughs> I say, stay back. Okay. okay, that's great. You're gonna so you're gonna intimidate. Okay, yeah. Let's let's see if it works. Let's see if these guys uh, freak uh, out. That, this doesn't require any actions, but I'm gonna do the same with our, our uh, what's the name of our little boy? <laughs> little Jack. Little Mac. Little Jack. <laughs> little Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do the same with him. Okay. So little, like, while little... Judge does that, I feel like I need to as well. So I grab Little Jack. <laughs> well, that that automatically succeeds. Little Little Jack is so sickly and and, and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and frail that you just you instantly grab him. <laughs> <laughs> and again, because I'm bad at using my bow, I just grab an arrow out of my quiver, and I hold it in my hand and shake it wildly and say, "Do you want a piece of this?" <laughs> 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 Great guys, it's, 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 Really characterful. I, I like. I like where this is going already. Uh, so, <laughs> Judge, I'm gonna say this is uh, again. This is probably like a forceful, uh, forceful display. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, from from what your your compatriots have done to aid you. They're both gonna give you a plus two, a plus one modifier for a total plus two to this. 
your uh, modifier for forceful activities is a zero, but that's okay. So, oh, rousing success. Wow. So you have one failure yes. here, uh, but you have three successes. So one of those successes goes away because of the failure. You're left with two successes uh, added to the two successes that you uh, already had. That's four successes. Let's see if these guys are intimidated or not. They're going to have to roll really well to be uh, not intimidated. Yeah, let's see it. So uh, they rolled okay, but no, actually they rolled a zero. So they're they're super intimidated. They don't they you they're stop shaking them. in their boots. I you see them. You stop them right in. Well, their they're dress. backing away because their boss is gonna get his head blown yeah. off by my wand. Absolutely, wanda. and, 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 yeah, and uh, they, they Thad is shaking that arrow. Oh yeah, that's that's it. what really did it. And I got the sickly boy. <laughs> they don't know what to think. So uh, they they. I'll tell you what they're thinking. They're thinking these guys are twisted. <laughs> 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 All right, so um. We're like Serpico. We don't dwell on the right side of the law. Yeah. Oh, and we like have it. facial hair. Like yeah. Serpico. Like Serpico. That's a handsome man, that Al Pacino. Anyway, um, the guards just, yeah, they, they, they freeze. And they're like, all right, hey, man, let's we can work this, let's work this out. We can work this out. You know, Rudiger and uh, Beauregard, they're shaking in their boots, man. You can tell. Whew. They are frightened. Um, so you, it's kind of up to you on, on how you guys want to play this. Um, all right, well, I, I start screaming at them. I say, this doesn't have to be this way. And then I say, everybody, just just get on the ground. Just get on the ground. I get on the ground. <laughs> and I say, not you, Michael. Okay, okay, great. And so he stands back stands up. Stands back up. Okay. And so I have I ask that Thad picks the pockets of oh, everybody who isn't man. part of our team. You guys. Ooh, that's good. You got, that's a real renegade move right there. I like it. Well, listen, ever since that incident that I got ran out of town, I've, I've been trying, I, 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 I dwell on the, the, the dark side. Okay. And I realize these guys, they got too much money. Yeah. And, you know, we're a startup, and startup costs are enormous. They are. Oh, yeah. And you know what? You're doing a public service for them in their own town, and they had the guff to give you malarkey about it? I don't appreciate that. Exactly. I rationalize all the evil <laughs> stuff I do. Okay, great. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, no, you, you managed to uh, elude... There seems to be no city guards right now. I guess that's what the bodyguards were for. So, yeah, you managed to uh, pick their pocket without any, really one, anyone else noticing you. You're just kind of just a... You guys happen to... Another successful haul. Yep. I, I uh, put my hands together like that. What you, I'm dusting them off. Yeah, I'm dusting them off. Yeah, yeah. So you, you guys actually gained got kind of a lot of gold from that. They're the rich people. I want to know where the gold at. They're, they're, they're pretty rich. I mean, obviously, they weren't carrying their entire fortunes on them. But let, let's say... I'm just gonna make a note on uh, Judge's thing here. You guys pick, picked up 20 gold pieces from each of those guys. They each had about 10 gold on them. It's a lot of money. And their horse carriage licenses, which we could use to steal their identity. True. Later. Yeah, you've you've got, you've got all of their. Uh... And their uh, city guard FOP cards. Oh yeah, yeah. Those are, those will help. Well, those, they, yeah, they, they, they were over. bodyguards. They're independent cro- contractors, much like you. Ah. So. They really didn't have anything on them. They had some, well, like... We got their their we got their blood letters insurance card. <laughs> yep. Okay. So you got that. And their rewards card for the pub. Oh, man. That, it, one of those has already got nine holes punched in it, man. That's like almost a free mead. What, what is Thad's reaction to this? Because I know he comes from a family of wealth. So is he impressed by this haul or is he just like, eh? Uh, I'm like, I, all, the only thing I say is, that's why they call me Sticky Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Since when have they ever called you that is what Michael Battle asks. Hey, yes. hey. In improv, it's always yes and, Michael <laughs> Battleaxe. That's not always true. <laughs> okay, so um, it, it's getting to be pretty late in the evening. Um, oh, how do we divvy up the money? So, we'll we'll worry about that later. Later, the money isn't super important right now. Um, but I mean, you, you got twenty, so you know, two of you get seven pieces of gold, one of you gets six. Um, figure it uh, out. That, that'll be Thad that gets six. Ouch. Take that, Thad. I'm I'm okay with that because guess what? I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me zero. See if sheets. I care. Six gold. <laughs> seven gold. Seven gold. All right, great. Um, so again, it's it's starting to get a little late in the evening. Um, you guys could retire back to your guild house, uh, which is a, a you know about a 10, 15 minute walk. Uh, you could go to a pub, you could, you could basically do whatever you want that, you know, you could do in a medieval city in the evening time. Well, guys, we got extra cash. Why don't we hit up the pub? Let's do it. I like those odds. I'm in. 
All right, cool. So, you, all right, oh, cool. I got, I got a picture prepared and everything. Sticky Fingers is in. Yeah, look at that. It's a medieval Sticky pug. Fingers. The first drink is on me, Juju. <laughs> <laughs> it's Judge. We've been through this. How long have we known each other? I don't know. How long have you known it's, each other? It's a great question. Um, I'm going to say this is month one of us knowing each okay, other. Okay, yeah. I mean, we're walking to the pub here. This might be a good time to discuss some, some backstory between you guys. Yeah, so we've known each other a month. I point my head up to the stars and I say, guys, how long has it been? <laughs> <laughs> and Perfect. I say, I don't know, a month, two, <laughs> Juji. And I say, we've been through this. It's a judge. Where did we first meet, Juji? Uh, well, I believe I was on the run. It was a very long run from my hometown after I had mistakenly turned the Duke into gold. And I was still being chased by the 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 townspeople of that town, which I mistakenly turned the Duke into gold. Oh, that's right. And I was off to the side gambling on if the townspeople would catch you. <laughs> that's true. And I ran over your dice rolling game. And so did the rest of the town. And your short temper made it such that you you directed your rage at all the town people who were, cha who were uh, chasing me. Oh, I okay. Gave them a taste of my battle axe. You did. You did. And as I watched from afar as you violently beat up these people, but there was no blood. It was very PG. Oh, okay. I didn't realize <laughs> a lot of, that. A lot of bones being rendered. Though. Okay. Yeah, basically said, confetti and candy coming out. Yeah, of that's when I got the idea. I'm like, hmm, I should start the millionaire's uh, mercenary group. Uh, though we did have to have a prolonged debate about what it was called. <laughs> right. And uh, Thad was walking down the street with like the hobo bindle. Except it was made out of solid gold. <laughs> and it had an unthinkable amount of treasures inside of it. And he said, what are you guys up to? And I said, well, Mr. Elf, we, we are thinking of starting our own mercenaries guild. And, he, and Thad thought to himself and he said, I'm in. Isn't that right, Thad? Just like that. that wow, that's right. like, that's tight. That's, oh, that Thad, is... uh, Thad, remember when you told me later that day, that day we met, when you said, uh, hey, I got this wheelbarrow full of money. You want to go burn it with me? I said, you betcha. I said, my sense of morality is warped by the fact that I was brought up around money, so I don't know the intrinsic value of things. <laughs> so let's burn this wheelbarrow full of cash. Well, Michael had given me a wedgie at one point because he thought I was a nerd. <laughs> but then after we talked for a while, he turned out I was actually kind of a cool guy. Yeah, I uh, he's a rich guy like me. Or he comes from a wealthy family. Like that's me. right. And we got to stick together. Yeah. Us rich people. They're coming to get us. Us one percenters. That aren't as rich anymore because you burned all your wheelbarrows full of money. Oh, there's but plenty that, more wheelbarrows for that. Okay. Plenty more okay. of that. Just wanted to make sure. That's like, a, that's like a Friday night for me. Gotcha. This story is going on for so long, we're all just walking into the side of the building yes. <laughs> while we're still uh, recounting. After this the really insightful flashback, you, you arrive at your destination. Uh, it's a tavern called Huzaz. And then the subtitle is where everyone knows your title. Uh, you walk in, and instantly, the crowd erupts. Oh, hey, judge! Hey, judge! Hey, Thad! Oh, like they say Norm on Cheers? <laughs> exactly. Hey, Michael! It's like huzzahs instead of cheers. <laughs> That's, that is a joke. And everybody knows your title. <laughs> so I go to talk to one of the NPCs, okay. and his pathfinding is broken. <laughs> <They're not> NPCs. <laughs> He keeps walking into a table. <laughs> that guy's name is Rick Nips. <laughs> NPC. He's, he's drinking an ale from a stein, but it's clipping through his beard. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm crouching and standing up over and over in front of him while he talks. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thad, what are you up to? What do you want? What do you want to do? I'm looking for karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm ready to sing some old Gregorian chants. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, I have a seat at the bar, and I order a tall glass of, uh, what's the local brew? I asked the bartender. Yeah, honey mead. Honey mead. Uh, what else do you got? Uh, you got any pumpkin mead? Pumpkin, pumpkin spice mead. Yeah, give me the pumpkin spice mead. Ah, you're so basic. That's me. Yeah, it's, 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 you get some pumpkin spice mead. It's quite refreshing. Um... 
uh, as soon as a, a, a kind of a drunk guy saddles up to you, says, oh, hey, I hear what you did in the noble district, man. That's awesome. You love when you give those noblemen a piece of your mind. Cheers to you and your mercenary Cheech group. <laughs> Cheech of Marin. Ye old Cheech. I roll my eyes and humor the guy. Okay, uh, Tom, you go. You sing a karaoke. You know, I'm doing a, I'm doing a duet with like two dwarves, and they're really really sloppy, and I'm and I just look really irritated. But I can't leave now because there's like four minutes of this chant left, and I'm just like desperately eyeing you guys at the bar, being like, "Get me out of this situation," and you're just letting me go with it because it's funny to you. And, I, and I'm saying I'll join you, but I need a few more mead drinks in me. I can't go up there sober. I feel ya. I've been there. Okay. Um. Anything else you guys want to do at the, at the Yule Tavern? Or are you you're about done? Oh. This this drunk guy. Mm-hmm. That's it. He just like came yeah. up and said, "Hey, good job." Yeah. Mostly he wanted to congratulate you. He's uh, you know, he's, he's drunk. He's he doesn't like the. Commoners and the nobles don't really get along in this in this society, and there's there's some, definitely some tension. Um, you guys, I, I think after doing that, and, and, and usually you're kind of seen as a as the heroes of the common people. Uh, you guys are sometimes at at each other's uh, at at ends with the, the nobility. So, you know, these guys are super happy to have you here. They're uh, they're they're psyched. Good oh boy. <laughs> I don't like this for one bit because I know one thing about the proletariat and they do not have money. Mm-mm. And again, the startup cost for a new mercenaries guild is through the roof. So I'm humoring the guy, but at the same time, I'm looking him up and down and I'm not seeing a whole lot of wealth. No, so. no, certainly not. He's grubby. He was probably like a butcher, you know, he's got like a, a, a apron on. It's all covered in blood. It's, it's mm-hmm. not- but I, I don't want him to spit in my uh, mutton. So I try to be nice. To okay. Him. Yeah, it's, it's a good approach. So that, that's about it. Things are things are kind of winding down. It's starting to get late. Um, they start to play closing time, except it's a guy with a loot. Uh, I, I spend all my time on the gambling machines, <laughs> playing cart playing cards in the cards in the corner over there. Let's let why don't we uh, why don't we see how you did over there? We're gonna roll for over the course of the night. Um, there, Michael Battleaxe. What do you what do you um? So you're up you're up seven right now, right? Right. Yeah, I'm playing solitaire <laughs> for money. For money, okay. <laughs> so, um, that's a medieval you, game, right? Are, are you gonna get? Are you gonna use any underhanded tactics? Do you think? For are you gonna? Are you gonna cheat? Or are you just gonna no, play it straight? But if I lose, anytime I lose, I get real mad and I put my battle axe in the table like a, you know, like a knife. <laughs> like a like a Chewbacca. Is what yeah, you're saying. yeah, yeah. <laughs> let the let the barbarian win. Am I right? Oh boy. <laughs> What's, what's your gambling approach? Are you uh, are you careful with your money, or are you uh, you you're a little flashy? <laughs> Absolutely not. I am flashy. You're flashy. All right, let's roll some dice. Let's, this is going to be not for each game, but we're just going to say over the course of the night how you did. Ooh, looking rough. Oh no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So you, you got two successes and two failures, which means uh, they cancel each other out, and we're, we're going to add your flashy total to that. So you did okay. You made a, a modest amount of money. So you took your seven gold, and you you made it. You turned it into nine gold. Congratulations, Mike. It's way to way to gamble. Now take all of that and put it on the Steelers covering. <laughs> yeah. You mean literal Steelers, like men who work with iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. blacksmiths. <laughs> the blacksmiths. <laughs> okay, we'll see how that bet works out in later episodes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll have to wait till Sunday to see. Burr, 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 burr. Uh, okay, so um, that's that's about it for the tavern. Mostly people are there just to congratulate you. Every once in a while, people come up. You know, the wenches, they're flirting with you a little bit, and they're happy that you took those noble jerks down a peg or two. Uh, so why don't you guys can probably head home if, if, if you want, or you can stay out, rabble rouse for a little bit. What's your plans? I, I, I say we call it a night, folks. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna hit the dusty trail. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's you, you guys close down the bar. It's about it's about two. You guys head back to your. Uh, are we you, are we sh- wasted? Hey, you know what? I, I don't know. Are you? You, you tell me. You're, you, it's your character. Uh, I am drunk. Okay, you're drunk. Fad. He's, he's. I'm starting to get the spins a little bit, but I'm okay. I'm gonna make it. 
Okay. I call a horse Uber to take me home. <laughs> okay. You hail an Uber? Yeah. No, so, okay, we go home. So you guys go home. <laughs> um, attempt attempt to sleep it off, right? But, uh, oh, right in the morning. It's like you guys went left at like two, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. like five right now. So like three hours later, you guys just awaken with a start to just pounding on your door. I'd pound, but it, it wouldn't sound good on the microphone. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> that Thanks. So you, you do a pounding. Oh, it's super loud. It must be a ogre behind that door pounding. You guys all kind of get up, wipe the wipe the sleepies out of your eyes, uh, go to the door. You're all feeling pretty rough. All right, I yell, Thad, get the door. <laughs> okay. I yell, I this this knocking is driving me bananas. <laughs> and I pick up my battle axe, which I keep under my pillow when I sleep, <laughs> and I throw it at the door. Oh, okay. And it sticks to the door, the closed door. <laughs> and it comically sails over Thad's head as he's watching. Yeah. He's walking over to it, and it's like stuck in the door, and Thad doesn't even notice. Yeah, and then I get up and slip on a banana peel. <laughs> and then my foot lands <laughs> in, a bu- <laughs> in a bucket, a mop bucket. No, it's one of those waste buckets yeah. that they used in medieval times. So you didn't it's understand sanitation. Chamber yet. pot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I go, oi. Oh, yeah. And I trip over something else and fall up, and I'm on the floor. Man, you are out of shape. <laughs> all right, so all this horse horse play and shenanigans going on in the background. Thad, are you going to open up the door here? Yeah, I'm going to be the sole voice of reason and just do what I said I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a realistic human being and not a caricature. <laughs> You're an elf. <laughs> <laughs> you have gold arrows. Don't try to tell me any of this. Don't try to sell me on this. <laughs> Alright, you open the door and uh, you look down and there's just this tiny little uh, street urchin there. He's uh, He's got a, a parchment rolled up with an official looking seal on it. And he sort of hands it to you and then he... Uh, he sort of outstretches his palm like, hey, buddy, can give me a tip here, huh? Huh? I immediately slam the door. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, he slams the door. You, can't, you hear his, the little tiny orphan bones crunch as the door. They get slammed in the door, but you show no remorse because <laughs> you are totally out of touch with the common man. Uh, so you open uh, you open the, the envelope or the, the wait before he does that I walk over wearing an athletic shirt and I say what's that and then okay then he opens <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm still on the floor <laughs> uh, so you unroll the parchment and it says uh, dear millionaire mercenaries you are requested at the office of bureaucrat Don Bamvilo immediately Failure to attend will result in permanent forfeiture of all guild titles and properties. Ugh, bureaucrats, I hate these guys. Uh, and it's signed and sealed, so you uh it looks legit. What do you what do you do you wanna head over to bureaucrat Don Bamvilo's place or do you just wanna blow him off? Uh you know, the tax code for new startups is unforgivable. Or unforgiving, rather, on us. So we better do what Big Brother wants us to. <sighs> so I walk over to Michael, and I pick him up off the floor, and I it, everybody gets dressed, and then we set out to to see what what the what the big deal is. 